Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the person of peace. Last week, we learned that Jesus instructed his disciples to focus on harvesting and not planting. This is because Jesus is the one who plants spiritual seeds everywhere, every day. We are not called to plant, we are called to harvest. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. We are not asked to pray for more planters, we are invited to pray for more harvesters. Souls are reaped, but churches are planted. Souls are reaped supernaturally by the power of the gospel are more likely to plant churches that move in the power of the Holy Spirit. If healing or deliverance brings you to Jesus, you're more likely to want God to use you in supernatural ways to introduce others to the message of Jesus. Jesus said, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest, John chapter 4 and verse 35. And I sent you to harvest where you did not plant, John chapter 4 and verse 38. Our task is to reap souls and plant churches, not to plant seeds and hope to reap churches. Jesus demonstrated that people who do not appear to be anywhere near ready to become followers of him can have their minds changed in a moment. Jesus modeled for us that the anointing we carry causes people to be immediately ready to receive the gospel. Uh, Luke wrote that the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go, Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. Notice that the power and authority that Jesus first gave to the 12 apostles has now been given to the 72 disciples. They too are commissioned to move in power and authority. Notice Jesus appointed and sent out these disciples. Now, the word for sent is apostello, which is, has the same Greek root as the word apostles or apostolos. The 72 disciples were sent out to do exactly the same thing that the apostles were sent out to do. Jesus gave them very specific instructions that we'll follow today. To introduce people to the kingdom of God, Jesus sent out disciples to find a person of peace who would help him spread his message. One time I was in a country just passing through and I happened to have coffee with a friend and a friend of his who was a professor of Islamic uh, interpretation. And as he asked me what I do and I spoke a little bit about my background, he said, well, I need you to come and to give my students a lecture. And he invited me to give a lecture on how Christians worship and pray. Uh, he opened a door for me, a door I could never have opened on my own. He was a man of peace. Uh, when we visit cities, we try to meet city officials and tribal leaders and chiefs. And these men and women open doors for us to speak because they are men and women of peace. Jesus said, whenever you enter a house, first say, may peace be upon this house. And if a peace-loving person is there, your peace will remain upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Luke chapter, five, uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. So how do we find this person of peace? These are the instructions that Jesus gave us to do to find men and women of peace. First, he said, go two by two. The Lord appointed 72 others 
and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. Jesus knows that it's always good to have a fellow believer with you to overcome moments of rejection. We encourage teams of two men or two women to go out in search of the one Jesus called the person of peace. Uh, if there are, we prefer that there are three people on a team if the couple are not married. Uh, there's wisdom in going out in groups to encourage each other when we are presenting the message of Jesus. Jesus said we are to go with expectation. Luke chapter 10 and verse 2. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And the Father has prepared the hearts of people to hear the message that we carry. He wants us to expect that our message will be received. And then we are to go carefully. I send you out as lambs amongst wolves. Luke chapter 10 and verse 3. God will help you to know who to talk to and who not to talk to. And he will protect you from danger. We are to go needy. Luke chapter 10, verse 4 and 8. We read that Jesus said, Carry no money belt or no bag or no shoes. It hardly makes any sense, does it? Don't greet anyone on the way. Eat without question. Jesus is so wise. He knows that people will provide for our needs. You don't have to tell me you don't have money because Jesus has already made a way for you to receive the provision you need. When we allow people to provide for our needs, then we know we have discovered the person of peace that Jesus wants us to meet. Then Jesus said, go boldly, Luke chapter 10 and verse 9, preach the kingdom of God has come near to you. Uh, these, <laughs> these teams were given authority uh, to heal the sick and to say to those who are in the town, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Would you notice they were given authority to heal not just one or two, but everyone who was sick in the town. As we do these things, we will discover the person of peace. The person of peace could be a man or it could be a woman. This is how you will know when you have met the person of peace. He or she will have been prepared by God uh, to receive your message. And perhaps that one will have had a vision of a man in a white robe or sometimes in yellow clothing. And sometimes he or she will have had a dream that someone is about to come and bring them a message. That one will often be known in his village as a sinner like Zacchaeus or like the woman of the well in Samaria. Uh, next, the person of peace will offer you food and shelter. Allow this person to do his or her job appointed by God. Eat whatever you are offered without question. One time I was in a remote village in Kenya, off of the roads into a part of Kenya you can only reach by walking. And as we walked a ways and into the village, we were welcomed into the village. And of course, we were ushered into the chief's tent and he wanted to give us some hospitality. And uh, there were some things in that village that people were eating and drinking that I, I felt quite concerned about. And God showed me what to do and he protected me. But if we eat what is before us, then we know that we have found the person of peace. And here is how we work with the person of peace. Stay with that person. Uh, don't move about. Because that person uh, will help you. That person will open doors for the gospel to be preached in places that you could never open for yourself. And then pray for the sick. Luke chapter 10 and verse 9. Trust God to display his miraculous power. He has put you in a situation where only his power can be manifested. And when it is manifested, it will change people's hearts. This is how Matthew worded it. Cure the sick. Bring the dead back to life. Change those. Cleanse those with skin diseases. And force demons out of people. What a powerful mandate Jesus gave us. Matthew chapter 10 
and verse 8. I've received stories from people all over the world taking the gospel where it has never been preached. People are healed and the dead are raised and brought back to life. So many people have told me stories about people that God put in a particular circumstance, in a particular situation, and somebody was brought back to life. That's the power of the gospel. Now Jesus said, preach and teach. Teach the principles of the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus sent us to do. And the Lord's Prayer is a great place to start, to teach people to honor and to worship the God of heaven, to say, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life, in my circumstances, to ask the Father to give us what we need each day for our family, uh, to teach people how to forgive, because when we forgive, we ourselves are forgiven, and we ask the Father to protect us from temptations that will lead us away from a heart that is devoted to him. And Jesus said, you're going to have to learn how to overcome rejection. Luke chapter 10 and verse 11. Whenever you enter a town, and they do not receive you. Go into the streets and say, even the dust that is on your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know that the kingdom of God has come near not everyone is ready to receive Jesus. Uh, and what it means is that uh, we should not reject others who have rejected us. We just need to release a prayer and a blessing and move on to the next, next person. When we shake the dust out of our garments, we are just shaking any rejection or any unbelief out of our own spirit. And we move forward in the power of the gospel. Uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, and verse 11, the one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. And so let me encourage you, whenever somebody says something mean or cruel to you or unkind, uh, just to mentally shake your garments and let all of that roll off of you and keep declaring the kingdom of God to those uh, who are willing to listen and so we overcome rejection by not taking things personally. Belief overcomes unbelief. Faith overcomes doubt. Acceptance overcomes rejection. That's what God wants you to learn how to walk in. And Jesus said when we work with the person of peace, we rejoice in the Lord. Luke chapter 10 and verse, 72, uh, verse 17, the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. They were so excited. And Jesus was, of course, excited with them as well. But he helped them understand why demons are subject to their name, to his name. He said, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven Jesus says, rejoice that your prayers are answered because your names are written in the book of heaven. And when you find where God is at work, you find God himself. And there's nothing more exciting than finding where God is at work. One time I was in Kenya, in the western part of Kenya, uh, in, the, in the desert amongst the Takana people. And the day before I arrived... It rained and rained and rained. The plane barely was able to land in all the mud. And then we drove in four-wheel drive. We were driving through rivers that were just flooded out. But that four-wheel drive was able to make it. And when we came to village after village, I had the opportunity to preach the gospel. When we came to the last village, I understood more about what God has, was doing. You see, it had not rained in that western desert, in that Tacana land, for five years. And the day before I arrived, it rained. And the people were certain that the man of God, that I brought the blessing of rain for the people. And as we prayed together and presented the gospel, every single person in that village received Jesus as their Savior. God took us to the man of peace, he opened the door for us to speak. He anointed me with the blessing of rain. And the whole village became followers of Jesus. 
Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.